I'm Gauri Maheshwari and I'm Hindu. I would define religion as the study of the spirit and of how everything came to be. Hinduism is a monotheistic religion. It believes in one God that is all pervasive. Uh, both imminent and transcendent. We believe in karma, which is the universal law of cause and effect. We believe in rebirth, in reincarnation, and eventually, once we have become perfected, we'll achieve moksha, where we'll merge with God. We believe in dharma, which is the necessity of righteous living, of living and seeing God within everybody, and doing our duty to society. We believe that every religion is valid, that the passion within each religion is what's important and not what name they call the God. Um, the soul is essentially one with Brahman already. We just don't know it yet. We have this veil of maya or illusion which gives us the idea that we are separate from God. Once we have achieved um, enlightenment, then we will merge with God like a drop of water into the ocean. So we have a little spark of God within us, and that is called the Atman. We have a lot of sacred texts. We have the Vedas, which are the most important texts. They came from the Rishis, or the seers, in ancient India. When they were meditating, they heard the voice of God, and they they heard the voice of God, and they spread the word, and it finally became written down after thousands and thousands of years. We also have the epics like the Mahabharata, and which has the Bhagavad Gita in it, and those capture the essence of what the Vedas are about, and bring it to a level that everyone can understand. We have the Upanishads, which were written by saints in the forest. They would go alone and meditate and write down what they, what they thought and what they felt. And those are deeply mystical and spiritual and require a lot of study. The Ramayana has Ram and Sita and Hanuman, who show us how to be good people. And it applies in every era. The stories are so universal that whenever we have a problem we can just look to that text. It's huge, so it will touch on anything that we need to know. And it'll give us guidance on what we should do and how we should behave. Unlike the Western um, religions, we do not believe in an, in an intrinsic evil. Hinduism doesn't have an eternal heaven and hell. It has states of being where karma is burned off, either good or bad, and we're reborn once it equalizes. Um, karma can go into the next, your next incarnation or hundred incarnations after that. Uh, there is no place that non-believers will go. If you, have, if you have faith and you're a good person, then you achieve good karma. In Western religions, the universe is created once and we will be destroyed once. In Hinduism, the universe is constantly being created, preserved, destroyed, and recreated. There is no heaven or hell. There is Everyone has one path, and that is towards God. Each person, each person will have different bumps in the path. Some may take more lifetimes to achieve it. But no person, no soul, will be denied oneness with God. Okay. Um, Hindus do not try to convert people into their faith, usually. Um, we believe that every faith is valid, and if you want to be a Christian, if you believe in Jesus, then that is perfect. We don't want to take you away from that. 
So there are obviously always going to be radicals who say that this is the only way. But as a general rule, Hindus do not believe that any other religion is wrong. And so we won't force anybody into our religion. We do allow people to convert on their own will. It's a very personal thing, a spiritual thing. There is no formal conversion. It's if you believe you are a Hindu, then you are a Hindu. So a lot of people like to change their name, like me, to symbolize their new faith or the faith that was always there, just not realized. So that is very much a personal thing and not required. Well, I was raised Catholic, and I never really connected with it. So I was spiritual for a really long time. And I was reading about all of the different religions to see if I fit into any of them. And once I started reading about Hinduism, my mind just opened. I was like, wow, this, I believe this. This is amazing. I didn't think anybody else really believed what I believed. So... I kept reading and reading and reading, and after about a year or two, I decided to go to temple. It was really scary because, you know, I didn't know what to expect, but everyone there was so nice, and I've been going ever since. It's nice to have a place where you have a community that is so similar to you in such important ways, like what you believe in. Uh, just to, to worship with people, it brings a new level to spirituality. There's one thing to do puja at home, but to do it with such passion, around other people with such passion, there's nothing quite like it. There are a lot of misconceptions about Hinduism. One is that we are polytheistic. We do believe in one God, that takes many different forms. And once you get to learn more and more about Hinduism, it becomes really apparent. Uh, we, don't also, we also don't worship idols necessarily. We do understand that that is a stone. And somebody carved it, and it's just a stone. But we need those tools to help us conquer our mind. Our mind wanders incessantly. So... During the puja, we have something to concentrate on. We have something to shower our affection on. It's hard to develop this love within you for God when you have no place to really put it. You're just like, I love you. So um, we do that. And also the bells ringing helps focus us and clear our mind. You know, loud noises just kind of point the mind towards what it's supposed to be doing and the incense puts us in a good mood so it's all all of the stuff that we do all of the rituals we do are tools to help us find God within ourselves it's all about oneness all about being part of that supreme Brahman and realizing that both within yourself and within others and by doing that, everything else will fall into place. If you see God within everything, you'll act right. You'll do the things that you need to do. The afterlife. Well, when you die, depending on your karma, what you did during your life, you will get reborn higher as a human which would be great, or lower as some sort of animal or plant, or even just a human in less fortunate circumstances. And it all just depends on what goals you need to achieve. If you need to realize humility, then you'll be placed in a life where you understand what it's like to be lower, or, and you realize the equality of everybody. So there's not really a heaven and hell. Your karma burns out mostly in this life. You know, the things that you go through will get you better or worse karma. And it is possible to burn off karma 
between lives, but heaven and hell aren't really a big part of Hinduism. And once you have evolved and have become enlightened, then you merge with God. Well, Hinduism is very much a way of life rather than just a religion. It comes into every aspect of your being, what you think, how you feel, what you do. It's made me very humble when I realize that God is both within me and that rock and that piece of grass and that little bug. I, I, I am so thankful for everything and it makes me a kinder, gentler person. Since ahimsa or nonviolence is such an important part. So the main deities in Hinduism are Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Brahma is the creator, Vishnu the sustainer, and Shiva the destroyer, dissolutioner. They both have, they all have their counterparts, which are the feminine, powerful aspects, uh, namely Sarasvati, Lakshmi, and Parvati. And those are the most well-known Hindu gods. But there are also really important ones that aren't. But there are also other ones that are important as well. Ganesha is extremely important in every Hindu's life as he removes the obstacles for worship, for becoming a better person, for evolution. He gives us, he is that connection that we have to God. Krishna and Rama and the other incarnations of Vishnu remind us what it is to be a good person. So it's not just anthropomorphic Vishnu out there somewhere. It's, it's a concrete idea and an ideal that we can emulate in our lives. And the planets are also really important in a lot of Hindus' lives as they are believed to have a direct influence on our daily experiences. So worshiping the planets and the massive amounts of energy that they are is important. How would I characterize God? At its essence is Brahman. God is not characterizable. He is without attributes, without form, totally beyond our perception, our tiny little human brains can't understand it. If I was to describe the different deities that God has formed, I could do that. Ganesha has a, a great sense of humor. He's gentle and easy to please. Vishnu is full of love and compassion. And Shiva is strong in the most soft ways, if it makes sense. He's like water that wears away the stone. He is so flexible that it's powerful. God takes different forms depending on which job he has to do. So like a man can be a husband, a father, and a fireman. He's the same man, but is called by different things depending on what he does. And so that's what God is like when he's Brahma and Vishnu and Shiva. Why do I believe in God? I've never really given it thought about why. I feel it's kind of self-evident to me. And I know to a lot of people it isn't rational, but in my mind it makes total sense how nothing could become something, how all this science forms what we are, how little atoms stick together and form you and me. And everything I see and experience and learn just solidifies that belief that there's something. Now why Hinduism? You know, I could be wrong. I could def definitely be wrong. But it connects with me and I just believe it. There's, there's something unexplainable about that connection with you and God.
My religion is important to me because it is the essence of life. It is the essence of what I'm doing here and why I'm doing it. It gives me purpose in what I accomplish, whether it's something little like getting a good grade on my test or something big as in like changing the world in some sort of way. Hindus worship at the temple and at home in their little mandirs, their little puja rooms. Temple is a place where Hindus can come together and worship together. And it becomes more powerful when you have all of those people with all that love around you. It's almost contagious. And we treat God like a king at temple. We perform abhishekam, which is a bath of all the sweetest liquids we have. We give him our best food and our best flowers. We give him incense and chant his names. And that helps us to bring out that devotion that is within us, bring out that connection to God. And when there's other people there, the vibrations are just stronger and stronger. And at home, we, we can't go to temple every day. Some, some do, but religion and worship is important every day. And so we'll have something at home, whether it's simply just putting a flower on the Lord or saying, you know, namaste and keeping that within your mind all day. Or when you're cooking and you just repeat the name of God, that in itself is worship. Or you know, holding the door open for somebody who has their hands full. That's worship when you keep, you know, see, I see God in that person. I'm going to treat that person like a God. That, that is worship, and it's perfect. <laughs>